Good morning, welcome back. So compared to the last video, we finally have some actual blinds now. No more being the only house with cardboard curtains and the floor as a couch. Is this my character development arc? Can someone play me my anime outro song? Is what I would say if AI wasn't stealing all our information. Not that I care too much since there's not a lot to see. The worst it could do is steal my birth certificate and social security number. What's a robot gonna do? Impersonate me? Don't answer that. I already know what's gonna happen in like 20 years. Machines are learning fast, and if we're gonna beat them, you might as well do it productively with Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes, along with hundreds of career-focused classes too. If you're looking to reinvent yourself this year, learning something new is a great way to start. Every class on Skillshare is taught in a way that's engaging and easy to follow, where you can set realistic goals to master that new hobby you've been wanting to pick up, or bring a whole new skill set to your current work, since we know that traditional jobs are never a one-size-fits-all type of deal. If you ever tried stepping out of your comfort zone before, you've probably heard of the term inner critic. Some of my biggest struggles are creative blocks and imposter syndrome, especially when I'm making content on the internet where I need to be consistently creative. They're a little bit annoying, those damn... See, I can't even come up with an insult. I took a class by Lucy Lambrix called Creative Confidence, Learn to Overcome the Critical Voice, part of the Inner Critic series. A really quick 50 minute class that teaches you how to overcome your inner critic and why it's normal for everyone to have this voice in the back of your head. It gave me a whole new perspective on how to approach moments when I have a lot of self-doubt, which was exactly what I needed. You can even interact with the person running the class and even with the students taking it, so you can learn and connect with each other. And if you're ready to take advantage of a free trial, the first thousand thousand of my viewers to join using my link in the description will get one month of Skillshare for free, so you can achieve your new career goals this year. Thanks again to our sponsor Skillshare, and to you guys for the support. Beauty filters have become a staple for us after discovering front-facing cameras and selfies, and usually you can tell when someone's using one. If it's video, sometimes you can see the filter glitch when your face isn't angled correctly for the filter to latch onto. You go from the classic Asian beauty standard of having pale skin and a V-shaped jawline to doing jumping jacks with your face like it's trying to quickly lose 10 pounds in 10 minutes. Oh. <laughs> um. Wow. There are like two different people in that body. That's me and my two personalities fighting for dominance. Also, you ever notice how the standard for Asian beauty looks like that white mask face from Courage the Cowardly Dog? She is pretty, but looks can only get you so far. The old school filters usually sit on top of your face like a mask, regardless of your features. That's why some people look good, while others look questionable if your face is in the perfect shape. Like why are there lashes and smoothing effect on someone's hair? Because of artificial intelligence and how fast the technology is evolving, beauty filters are so advanced, it scans your facial features and bakes the filter directly into your face so it won't move, even if you put your hand in front of your face or turn a certain way. That's what your face is gonna look like through the camera lens. I can't believe this as a filter. The fact that this is what filters have evolved into is actually crazy to me. I grew up with the dog filter on Snapchat and now this, this filter gave me lip fillers. This is what I look like in real life. You used to do that with an old filter and you would see the lashes on your hand like it would glitch. But look how perfect. This is, I'm wearing no makeup right now. This is all a filter. It's facial recognition used for evil. Maybe not evil, but it's definitely gray, like this girl's sweater, and her pursuit of catfishing people to pay her rent. Usually you see the filter over your hand. I can start catfishing people. I can make rent. The thing is, these people still sort of look like themselves to a degree. You ever take a hundred selfies that all look terrible? Except for that one miracle of a picture that looks so good you even question if it's you or not. But then you don't care and change it to all your profile pictures anyways. It's pretty much you, but the best version of yourself. Enhanced with all the popular beauty features that everyone's striving for nowadays. Facial plastic surgeon Dr. Monica Q tried it out for herself. It makes the brows lifted, the cheeks more sculpted, the nose slightly more refined, and then the lips it makes it a lot plumper and juicier looking. These filters have messed with our brains so much that people honestly think this is what they look like. This filter is insane. Like, look, it's 
It's so real. We see people online more often than in real life while scrolling through Instagram and TikTok. Eventually, no one's gonna even look like themselves anymore, and we're all gonna be catfishing each other, whether it's intentional or not. When you're online dating, competing against everyone else in the dating pool, the baseline as the standard is gonna be a filtered face. Whoever isn't using a natural looking filter will be considered less attractive. Okay, so bold glamour is the filter on TikTok that everyone's talking about recently. It works so well that it actually distorts the way you see yourself after taking it off. This filter has been used over 2 million times. It's crazy. I don't look anything like this, but the filter itself looks natural. Like there's some skin texture there. I've seen other people use it and then do like a big reveal and they've looked pretty much exactly the same. Perhaps just less contoured makeup. I don't think my brain knows how to deal with looking like this one minute and then this the next. I'm just imagining two people not being able to find each other in real life because the only pictures they've seen of each other is the bold glamour version of each other's faces. It's like a funny version of Where's Waldo, except he's rocking the bold glamour filter and a Shein jumpsuit. K-pop is a good example of how something so mainstream has skewed a perception of how we actually see celebrities. You ever wonder why idols' faces are always so smooth and perfect? It's not Korean skincare and the most advanced cosmetic treatments. It's the bold glamour filter turned up to a thousand. Take the K-pop group twice for example. Before I say anything, they'll increase my chances of getting jumped at a TWICE concert. They are my favorite group, stream set me free, I am ordering a light stick as we speak. The concept for their latest teaser was the girls showing their bare faces by taking off their makeup and lashes, which you don't see a lot in this industry since being an idol is a curated image of a perfect being with no flaws. And no, there wasn't a bear underneath, it was a person. But you're telling me that after washing your face and hovering a cotton pad over your skin for a few seconds, you still have a soft focus smoothed out complexion? with light pink glittery eyeshadow and filled in eyebrows? What in the Takansila is this? What is love? What is pores and texture? Come on, be serious. I'm about to fight in a war called buying concert tickets on Ticketmaster. If I'm spending thousands of dollars on a VIP ticket, it better come with health insurance and a performance at my Airbnb. As the people that go to concerts say, I finna be in the pit. I do get why they're not actually showing their real skin. The beauty standards in Korea are literally so insane. If you don't naturally look like this, you're open putting yourself up to getting bullied or criticized for having bad skin. Uh, you mean looking normal? When all K-pop idols and music videos have the same Photoshop AI filter treatment, the people watching will think, oh, Everyone must look like this if we've never actually seen pictures of their natural faces, which obviously looks a lot more realistic. You only see their real faces in pictures taken at times when they don't look their best, like at the airport or in a casual setting. And having articles written about how an idol isn't taking care of themselves or has bad manners for not looking presentable to their fans is a pretty normal occurrence when looks are highly valued. How dare someone not go through 12 hours of hair and makeup before boarding a 12 hour flight? You're not gonna look your absolute best while eating free peanuts and taking a nap, celebrities love selling you the illusion that you could also look like them. If you buy their skincare, follow their 20-step gym routine, all while sporting a smoothing, wrinkly racing filter. This happened to JLo recently, who is well known for looking good for her age based on all the photos that her team puts out. A little filter glitch on TikTok showed what her actual skin looks like for one second. You go to the gym without telling me Ooh. you go to the gym. I'll go first. I think she jump scared herself when the filter came off. Without telling you, you go to the gym. It's not really a big deal if you're using a filter when you're making a TikTok, but when you claim this is what you normally look like while selling products to your fans, that's when you start questioning the ethics behind these actions. At this point, AI beauty standards are gonna overtake human beauty standards. There is science behind why our monkey brains find some faces more attractive than others. It's all because of symmetry and how close one side of your face matches the other side. For all the people that only slept on one side of your face as a baby with no self-awareness, why didn't you turn yourself over when you were month old? You think life just gives out perfectly symmetrical faces without any hard work? Well, yeah, because now we have machines that can create human faces out of thin air. So remember those K-pop idols that already look better than 99% of the population? What if they just transcended regular human attractiveness using an algorithm that figures out the perfect ratio of desirable features? The technology isn't quite there yet. You can still tell these aren't actual humans. The stiffness and the uncanny movements sort of give it away. Hello, Cynthia's. Two, three. Make new wave. We are Mave.
Thank you, and see you on Soompi! Bye! Although, this would also be me doing a group presentation in public, but a quick glance from the side would definitely make someone do a double take. You even have AI modeling agencies, where you can hire people that don't even exist to model your clothes. Any body type, face shape, gender, or race, is this the future liberals want? Someone with nine fingers on each hand? Anything is possible if you're building a person from scratch. Who needs to look at real humans anymore when you have cute anime waifus and hasbondos that are visually perfect in every way? If you do decide to get married and have an AI spouse in the future, you might need to spend the majority of your time grabbing things for them, since you're probably gonna avoid looking at their hands at all costs, unless you want nightmares. Hands and fingers are not symmetrical, that's why AI algorithms can't draw them. This is because the complicated geometry of hands means that there are no universal collection of lines or shapes that AI can use to identify a hand. AI must combine many various shapes and combinations to make convincing hands. They'll always look like, if you asked an alien who is never seen a human before to draw a human-shaped hand. If you ever want to know if something was AI generated or not, just ask them. Show me the hands. In this war of us versus machines, the only thing we have to our advantage is normal shaped hands and the ability to unplug a computer. Who would have thought every time we use a filter, we would unintentionally be rebranding ourselves? Eventually, people are going to show up for a date and not be able to find each other. It's fine to follow beauty standards to an extent, they're not going away anytime soon. As long as we don't obsess over them and realize everything on the internet is fake, we'll all be fine. Easier said than done, right? We're all just insecure cogs in a giant beauty machine that feeds us useless information, so we don't have any time to think one sad thought. I feel that, especially since I am also a cog in a giant YouTube algorithm hamster wheel. The algorithm likes being told it's pretty, just like the rest of us. Give this video a like and leave a comment so it knows you're engaged, and I'll get to see you guys on your recommended. Have a good day, try not to be dumb, and I'll see you in the next one.